What's going on everyone? Welcome back. It's your boy Uche. Disclaimer, today's episode is going to be very, very deep. So if you're not a deep person, you may not enjoy this. It may actually be too complicated for you. So I do suggest that if you are not somebody who is into esoteric conversations, philosophy, like really, really deep, and this gives you a headache. I've met a lot of people who don't like these kind of conversations. You might want to skip this video because I'm going all the way deep. If you're someone who is not afraid to dive in deep, then please tag along. But this is an episode that I've been meaning to do for a while, but I've been so bombarded with so much work. And today I felt really moved to talk about this particular topic. You know, this life is a very interesting place. Um, and all of my life, since I've been a kid, I've always found this place to be like a dream. Like, it doesn't feel real. None of this feels real. Like, I feel like I was one year old last week or yesterday even. And I feel like even in 30 years from today, it will feel like the exact same way I feel today. And I've explained this through, you know, using physics and metaphysics in one of my very latest episodes where I talked about now is all you've got, how life or time itself is an illusion. There's no time. What is is now. Now is all there is. Now is all there has ever been. Now is all there will ever be. And I explain that using the dot of everything. Uh, and within the dot of everything contains everything. And I mean literally everything. Things you think you know, things you know you don't know, and things you don't know you don't know. So there's a lot about this reality, this realm, this life, if you want to call it that, that we don't know. But all of my life, I'm 31 years right now, all of my life, as I've gotten older, I have learned so much. In this life, if I can su summarize it in one sentence, it, I would say that life is both exciting and scary. And I appreciate both equally, especially for me, Uche, as an individual occupying space and time. I appreciate the exciting part of life because it keeps me wanting more, hungry for more. And I've always been a very curious minded person all of my life, always looking for knowledge. I don't like not knowing. The thought of not knowing what is, is bothersome to me. And the more I look for knowledge, the more I seek knowledge, the more I come to realize that there's a lot more that I don't even know and I haven't even begun. And then the, the part of it that is scary is the part that keeps me in check, if that makes sense. It's a reminder for me to play by the rule book. It's a constant reminder that although this life is a foreign reality or a dream, if you want to call it that, there are still rules governing this place and you ought to align with those rules. If not, there will be devastating consequences. So that, that anxiety, I don't want to call it anxiety, that thought of not aligning with that pattern, that order that courses through this reality, you know, stepping out of it and facing that, those consequences, that's the scary part. And, and both the exciting part and the scary parts keep me in check and make this life very interesting. And all of my life, again, at 31 years old, I have learned so much, learned so, 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 so much from reading, watching, talking to people, asking questions, school, like just being present constantly absorbing like i don't know what i would do with my life if i didn't have the ability or the opportunity for me to absorb knowledge and i have learned so much and the interesting thing the interesting thing is one of the things that have helped me learn so much is the fact that i am a black african queer person so interesting for me to say that especially considering the state of the world we live in right now where Black people are at the bottom of the barrel, but not just black people, especially Africans, because there's levels to this black stuff, right? You have the black people, the very privileged black people, black people who either live in America or the Americas or in Europe, Australia, you know, the affluent countries. And then you have, you know, the Caribbeans, you know, maybe the Jamaicans, Trinidadians, people from the Bahamas. Those places have been highlighted as exotic. So those people who have some type of exoticness to them. And then you have Africa. The African blacks are considered the bottom of the barrel. And then you have the queer talk. Queer people are d discriminated against, murdered in certain parts of the world, are constantly told that they're going to hell, called abominations and things like that. And yet here I am saying that some of the best things that has ever happened to me in this life that has helped me and given me the biggest boost in life are those three things, being a black African queer person. And I'm going to explain. But before I explain, 
I feel like part of the reason why I feel so grateful for these three things is I feel like a lot of what I know, or at least what I think I know, I would have missed it if I was not a black, African, or queer person. Like if I was any other thing, first of all, that would be impossible for me to be in anything else because this is like divine precision. Like there's no mistake here. So it would be impossible for me to manifest as anything else than myself. I don't even know if that makes sense. Again, if this is too deep for you, go somewhere else. But let's say hypothetically, if I were to manifest as something else, maybe a white man, an Asian man, or a woman, or a straight person, for example, all things the same, hypothetically, again, because it's impossible for that to be, right? Hypothetically, all things the same, all things considered, everything else about me is the same. I would have missed out on so much knowledge, so much of what I know, not just about blackness or being African or being queer, but about everything else that these three things have triggered, I would have completely missed out on them. And let me explain why, starting with black. You know, a lot of black people, especially here in America, always have this conversation. Over the years, I've listened to this conversation. A lot of black people always say, oh, we're different, we're different, we're different. Which is true to a certain extent. Yes, black people are different. You know, it doesn't matter if you like black people or not. We are different. Black people move differently. There's something very different about black people. And this thing that is different about black people is the reason why a lot of people have discriminated against black people for so long. It's also been the reason why a lot of people, some people like black people, matter of fact, love black people or even are infatuated and obsessed with black people because of that differentness. We don't really know what it is, but everyone can kind of tell, yes, there's something different about black people. But what is it? What is that thing that is different about black people? And unfortunately, I've heard a lot of black people confuse this thing that is different about us black people as, oh, we're special or we're better. I get it. The way the ego works, you know, the ego wants to latch onto anything that it, it can latch onto. You know, you have people who are, some people who are white who claim that they're better because they're white. Of course, I can see the ego also latching onto black people claiming that they're better because they're black. But this thing that is different about black people is not necessarily because black people are better nor even worse. Different, yes, but there's a reason for that. A much deeper spiritual reason as to why black people are quote unquote different. If you watched one of my latest videos where I talked about now is all you've got, please, if you haven't watched it, go, go ahead and watch it. On the second half of that video, that episode, after I've talked about my life growing up, I talked about time being an illusion. And I, of course, uh, from a scientific uh, perspective, quoting physics and quantum physics, time truly is an illusion. There's no time. If you haven't watched it, go ahead and watch that video. You, you can pause this video right now, go watch that video and then come back. But time in itself is an illusion. Time is not real. And in that video, I described how what is, is actually now. Now is all there is. Now is all there has ever been. And now is all there will ever be. That may not necessarily make sense to you. But again, go watch that video. I did a good job breaking the, that video down. But go watch that video. And after you watch that video, come back um, to this particular episode. Time is an illusion. So in that episode, I talked about how what is, is existence now. And that existence is encased in what I call the dot of everything. And within this dot of everything, everything is happening all at once. Literally, every single thing is happening all at once. Your birth is happening right now. You are happening right now. Your death is happening right now. Big Bang is happening right now. The destruction or death of the universe is happening right now. Dinosaur is happening right now. Literally every single thing is happening right now. And everything interacts with everything. And this dot of everything is alive in its own way. It has a very intelligent consciousness. It's very conscious. It's alive. It is the epitome of goodness. Its goodness is so precise. And the goodness that I'm talking about here is not goodness as we have been indoctrinated as what goodness is. You know, you feed the homeless and, you know, donate money and things like that. No, no, no. The goodness that I'm talking about is one that is much deeper than we can even comprehend is one that we understand as mathematics today it is precise as in four plus four can never be more than or less than eight anywhere in the universe it is perfectly precise perfectly ordered and everything interacts with everything that dot of everything knows what will happen what is and what already happens so i believe this is just my philosophy that this dot of everything 
again everything is encased within this dot of everything you know us included reality humans included um the universe included beyond the universe metaphysically physically all of it like literally everything is encased within this dot of everything this dot of everything has infinite knowledge of what is it knows what will happen and what is about to happen when we make choices it affects the dot of everything no matter how little your choice is even if it's you sneeze it affects everything you sleep it affects everything you lie it affects everything literally anything you drop a feather it affects everything a butterfly flies by it affects everything no matter how minute you think whatever it is that you're doing is or insignificant whatever it is that you think you're doing is it affects every single thing the reason why i'm saying all all of that is it's as though this dot of everything knows that time will come in the existence of humans when a particular race aka the white race will think and believe that they are more superior than another particular race or every other race but especially black race and will subdue them as a result, in compensation for what is to come for these other races, but especially the black race, that dot of everything has given the black race what I call a buffer. Now, this buffer, don't get too hooked on the words, because if you get hooked on the words, you will lose the meaning of what I'm trying to talk about. Quoting Eckhart Tolle, one of my favorite writers, words are signposts okay if you hold on to the words you miss the point of what i'm saying but if you listen to me with spiritual discernment you know exactly what i'm talking about a buffer is just a word that i call it but your spirit probably understands this word as something totally different but it's a compensation for what is to come the dot of everything has gifted every other race not the white race particularly but every other race a buffer and there's hierarchies to this buffer and i believe that the black race has the most of this buffer in the context of race that is this buffer is formless it is a gift it is it's something that flows from a place where time doesn't exist and it manifests itself in a physical form the way that it manifests itself can be seen as different if that makes sense it can manifest itself in the fact that when you see black people a lot of black people seem very energetic you know whether it's in sports our ability to play sports our ability to build you know i mean this entire country was basically built on black people our ability to persevere or or even the way we dance you know like black people can basically dance to any beat easily any beat like literally any beat of course there are some few exceptions here and there but for the most part irrespective of what type of black you are caribbean black african black american black any black at all nine out of ten a lot of times black people can dance to any beat i know this sounds so trivial but this is just one of the ways it manifests itself it manifests itself in so many different ways this is one of the things that make black people different but the truth is that the source is a buffer this buffer though doesn't make you necessarily better see on a surface level you it seems different you appear different because of how it manifests but on a spiritual level it is actually equal it buffers you up with the white race on a spiritual level so the white and the black on a spiritual level are actually quite equal it's just that on a physical level this dot of everything understands that this group the white race would eventually subdue the black race and it has compensated in the physical manifestation that is right for what is to come this buffer though is not just synonymous to black race this buffer is human everyone has some form of buffer including people within the white race as well there are different buffers for different things but a lot of times this buffer is usually for people who have some type of disadvantage whether it's a buffer because you're a woman or a buffer because you're a colored person a buffer because you're black a buffer because you're a queer person a buffer because you're disabled a buffer because you're not really tall enough a buffer because your iq is you know relatively average it is some form of compensation because it's not of everything has a full on consciousness and intelligence and it understands what it is to come again this buffer doesn't necessarily make you better on the surface on a physical level you appear different but on a much deeper spiritual level you are actually equal this is why black people appear different not necessarily a bad different nor necessarily a better different is just a buffer and if you think about it from not so much of a deep perspective but a, from a physical perspective a, a surface level perspective black people whether you like it or not are some of the most resilient people on the planet 
all the things that we've been through and continue to go through, yet we persevere. Whether it's black people in Africa doing the best that they can. I know that Africa is a hot mess right now, but the average African is still doing the best that they can. Whether it's black people in the Caribbean, whether it's black people in the Americans, coming up with their own culture, whether it's rap, hip hop, whatever the situation is, black people thrive. They are very resilient in every single thing. And I believe that this is because of that buffer. That buffer gives you some type of spiritual upper hand that manifests itself in different. Again, this is one of the reasons why I am very grateful to be a black man because I feel like if I wasn't black, I would have missed it. Especially if you're someone who has prejudice over black people. You will confuse this different as something negative. When you already look down on someone, doesn't matter what that person does, you use that reason as a reason to confirm your bias. This unfortunately is a reason, is one of the reasons why a lot of people have discriminated against black people because they see that buffer being manifested in the way black people act, but the way black people talk, the way black people dress all of that and they use that as a reason to discriminate against black people as because they see that buffer manifested as bad different when in reality that buffer is actually an equalizer as a result of that perfect order that courses through the dot of everything again i would have missed it if i wasn't black now the reason why i not only appreciate the fact that i'm black but specifically african i feel like being from africa especially being born and raised in africa has given me the opportunity for me to see live and be around not just black people but the bottom of the bear i saw poverty i saw a lot of hardship i was part of that you know of course my family was not dirt poor but i've been through a lot of things i've been around a lot of messed up stuff and i feel like being a black person being raised in africa i got the opportunity to see not just black people but the bottom of the bear of black people and i can see from a much deeper perspective how white supremacy a manifestation of the ego has deceived and robbed a lot of black people the power that they can manifest as a result of their buffer as a result a lot of that power that could manifest in creation from that buffer has become dormant and unfortunately this is how a lot of black people are stuck and a lot of black people perpetuate our own pain again this is just the workings of the ego i'll do an episode someday to break down how the ego works the ego is a very malevolent ancient intelligent and intentional spirit it lives in this realm and it seeks to divide and conquer this ego knows that it knows that black people have a fair opportunity to equalize what is because of the powers of that that buffer but the ego seeks to dumb that down and the way that it does it is through white supremacy which white supremacy is so deep and powerful that everyone white black and everyone in between perpetuates white supremacy because of the workings of the ego this is why i am glad that i'm not just black but i'm african as in the bottom of the blackness i get to see that any other way i would have missed it now let me talk about why i appreciate being a queer person and i mean this from the depths of my soul being a member of the lgbtq is by far one of the best things that has ever happened to me in this reality me as uche as a human being occupying space and time i'm not saying that if you're not a member of the lgbtq there's something wrong with you that's not what i'm saying i'm just saying that me as an individual this is one of by far one of the best things that has ever happened to me matter of fact it will be impossible for anything else to be different right and going back to my point earlier there's divine precision divine order in everything everything is perfect this is the best all things considered this is the best manifestation that can be it would be impossible for anything else to be it would be impossible for me to be a straight man it would be impossible for me to be white it would be impossible for me to be shorter or taller it would be impossible for me to be lighter skin darker skin it would be impossible for me to have a different family it would be impossible but again going back to the scenario earlier hypothetically if in the situation that somehow I happen to not be queer, which again would be impossible because this is the best that can be. And in, within that dot of everything, there's divine precision. This is the epitome of goodness. Again, like I mentioned in the ep previous episode, hopefully you've watched it. If you haven't, please go watch it. There's divine precision. But hypothetically, if I was not a queer man, if I was straight, if I was heterosexual, I would have missed out on so much knowledge on what it means to be queer. Again, going back on that episode, I talked about how I had to deconstruct and decolonize the idea of God and I'm so glad that I've been able to do that and one of the things that has triggered that is not just being a queer person but the entirety of my life a lot of the things that I, I went through and how a lot of that contradicted a lot of the things that I was indoctrinated to believe about God you know through organized religion and of course 
I walked away from that and started seeking my own truth and I started to uncover a lot of things. I believe that God is a God of androgyny and by androgyny I mean the combination of the masculine and feminine energy. See patriarchy which is a working of the ego has gotten us confused that God is a he. This is patriarchy and this is ego. God is a father figure but not just a father figure, a white man who sits up in some throne. That is not true. God is actually androgynous in God's own nature, male and female, yin and yang combined together. When God is creating, God created everything in God's image, including man, the likeness of God, which means that everything exudes androgyny, everything. This concludes bacteria, trees, plants, animals, everything, including human beings. Everything exudes androgyny to a certain extent. Now, because of the beauty and diversity, not everyone is calibrated equal, right? Some people have more feminine energy, some people have more masculine energy. The closer you are to that androgyny, the more you exude something totally different. But that and androgyny, that midpoint of androgyny manifests itself in so many different ways. And one of the ways that it manifests itself is through queerness. This is why I believe that queer people are actually gatekeepers. Queer people have the ability to tap into something, something much deeper than physicality. And I'm gonna break that down in a bit. Androgyny doesn't always manifest in sexuality though. It can manifest in a heterosexual person. Androgynous being can manifest in a woman, a heterosexual woman who exudes a lot of masculine energy. The fact that she is a manifestation in physical form of feminine, yet that exudes masculine energy categorizes her as a higher level of androgyny. Similarly, there could be a heterosexual man who is truly heterosexual, not bisexual, not even bi curious, a heterosexual man. However, this heterosexual man exudes a lot of feminine energy. That is also androgyny by default. The fact that him in a physical body manifests as masculine, yet he exudes feminine. That is on that spectrum of androgyny. That automatically categorizes him as a being that exudes a lot of androgyny. The closer you are to that high androgyny, the more different you are. Sexuality just happens to be one of the ways that it manifests itself. Again, it's not always manifested in queerness. The reason why I say this is people who are higher on that androgynous being or that combination of masculine and feminine energy, these people are gatekeepers in my opinion. Think about it. Every single woman, literally every single woman who has made a boss move, whether it's Michelle Obama, whether it's uh, Condoleezza Rice, whether it's uh, Olivia Pope, fictional character, whether it's Hillary Clinton, whether it's Nicki Minaj, doesn't matter whether you like these people or not. My point is every single woman, every single woman that we know who has made a name for themselves, who has commanded respect, has always been a woman with high masculine energy. The masculine energy, like I've mentioned before, is the doer. This is the one who takes charge. These women have always been boss. So a woman who exudes a lot of feminine energy will be a woman who is not really a doer. This will be a woman that you wouldn't really hear much of. You know, you may say she's polite or nice or cute and things like that. She will be high on thinking and emotion and creativity and things like that. But she's not really someone who takes boss moves. A lot of times when these type of women make a name for themselves, it's usually because they have made a name for themselves because of the people they surround themselves around. And those people they surround themselves around maybe a spouse or people that they've hired or people who exude a lot of masculine energy but these women that i'm talking about who exude masculine energy on their own these are boss women this is because that androgynous spirit is a spirit of gatekeeping similarly when you think about all the men who we know of who are bosses you know who have made a name for themselves these are men who also exude the spirit of androgyny whether it's a person you like or you don't like whether it's obama bill clinton whether it's martin luther king whether it's uh, Donald Trump, it doesn't matter. These people exude a spirit of androgyny. It doesn't even matter in their sexuality. Androgyny in their physical male manifestation and in their high feminine energy that they exude in the form of intellect. Again, I've mentioned this before. The feminine energy is the intellect, as a thinker, as the planner. These people are people who are very, very intentional, very intelligent, and they have the ability to also execute, hence why that masculine energy. This combination is very special. Now, the very special thing about queer people is the fact that this androgyny is so powerful that it manifests itself physically and sexuality. Ever since I started seeking the truth for myself without conforming to the malarkey that the word has taught me, I have come to see 
truly, truly, there's something extremely special about queer people. I believe queer people have the ability to tap into heaven. Again, don't get too hooked on the word or the words that I'm using, heaven, for example, because I know a lot of those words have been corrupted so much because of extreme religiosity as a result of organized religion. Heaven here, or like the Buddhists will call it, nirvana, is the purity of what is beyond this phenomenological existence. Heaven is truly what is existence within the dot of everything beyond human existence, if that makes sense. This heaven is timeless, it's pure, it's formless. It is the embodiment and the epitome of goodness. And I believe that gatekeeping as manifested through queer people is one of the ways that this reality of humanity is being blessed by the dot of everything, blessing this realm with the gatekeeping the queer people. These people have the ability to tap into something much deeper. Now, in this realm, this heaven manifests itself through queer people in so many different ways. I remember back a few years ago when I was in college, someone made a comment loosely that gay people are very intelligent, always seem to be intelligent. The interesting thing is I've kind of dismissively thought about that in the past until this person mentioned this and I started thinking about it. You know what? There is some type of validation there. Queer people exude something different. When you think about it, queer people always seem to have a touch of something different in everything. This is that heaven manifesting itself in the now, in the human reality. This is why it is very common for you to see a lot of queer people in art, in music, in fashion, in poetry, in creativity, uh, in photography, in acting, anything that has to do with creativity. This is also why a lot of queer people are very compassionate. A lot of queer people seem to be very emotionally intelligent. They're very relatable to this is also why a lot of women naturally gravitate towards gay men because of that sink in feminine energy which that feminine energy is the thinker the nurturer the birther and the fact that this manifests itself in androgyny is what makes it very special but going back to the ego the ego knows this the ego knows that queer people are actually gifts to humanity yes I know it sounds biased for me to say because I'm a queer person, but I believe this in the depths of my soul. The ego understands that queer people are actually, truly, truly blessings to this place. Imagine what this world would be if there weren't gay people or queer people in general. Just imagine, imagine what Hollywood would look like. Imagine our movies or our, our sense of fashion. Imagine the creativity that will be lost forever. Imagine all of the things that will be lost forever. And these are just from the queer people that we think we know. Imagine all the queer people who have contributed to so much, but they're in the closet. Imagine if there were no queer people. I can even begin to imagine what this life would look like. This place would be boring, very boring. That's because queer people are the gatekeepers to connect this realm of reality with the rest of everything else that is encased within the dot of everything. But again, like I said, the ego knows this and the ego seeks to divide and conquer. When you think about what an ideal man is, according to society, this ideal man is basically the, oh, oh, you know, bro, oh, oh, type of dude, the meathead, you know, he is one who manifests a lot of masculine energy, but no feminine energy. And this is what patriarchy does. Patriarchy gets men to kill their feminine energy and gets women to kill their masculine energy. Patriarchy tells men that it is wrong for you to have emotions, to talk about your feelings, to go for therapy. It's wrong for you to be intentional. As a man, you don't need to learn how to cook. You don't need to do this. You don't need to do that you don't need to play with colors you don't need any of that all you have to do is just be a rugged oh man at all times this is actually a lie think about a heterosexual man a heterosexual man who exudes mostly masculine energy again it would be impossible for you to exist if you don't have masculine and feminine energy but this will be someone who exudes like let's say 95 percent masculine energy and five percent feminine energy that lack of balance is actually a form of handicap this will be a bro type of situation right maybe a guy who works out he looks good you know he's very tall muscular you know the type of dude that would do jackass type of stuff that would do without really thinking this will be a dumb diddy dumb man a man who has no intellect whatsoever he looks the part he wouldn't have the problem doing anything dumb 
because there's no intellect whatsoever but he's a man he's a real man but does a lot of dumb shit this unfortunately is the idea that patriarchy tries to get us to embrace by telling you that as a man you need to extinguish your feminine energy but the truth is that every single one of us we have been perfectly calibrated to manifest androgyny to a certain extent yes yeah, some people have more feminine energy irrespective of gender some people have more masculine energy irrespective of gender and also irrespective of your sexuality however you have been perfectly calibrated to have what you have so if you're a man for example whether it's heterosexual or a queer man who exudes both masculine and feminine energy patriarchy tells you that to be a real man you need to clip your feminine energy this will be equivalent to being born with two legs and someone convinces you that to be a real man you have to cut off one of your legs so you are handicapping yourself by yourself because of the workings of the ego again think about that guy that i mentioned the heterosexual man who exudes significantly more masculine energy than feminine energy this is someone who would be quote unquote considered born handicapped born disabled spiritually disabled to so to speak but this is not necessarily because there's anything wrong with that person this dot of everything has manifested them like that because they fulfill a purpose in this being there will always be special people amongst us and we shouldn't laugh at them we shouldn't make fun of them right because it is what it is but you though a man whether you're heterosexual or queer you have been perfectly calibrated in your own masculine and feminine energy and you given into the teachings of the ego to clip your feminine energy because the ego has convinced you that to be a real man the feminine energy has to go this is you deliberately handicapping yourself matter of fact to paint you a better picture it will be less painful for you to wake up in the morning go to your kitchen grab a kitchen knife and slash your arm every single day because the damage that you're doing to yourself will be physical if you were to slash your hand compared to what you're doing with yourself spiritually you are tainting your own spirit by handicapping your spiritual calibration of androgyny and again people who are queer have a higher dose of this androgyny androgyny is gatekeeping this is a gift to humanity this would be someone who is a prophet but not necessarily prophet in the way we think as you know preached by organized religion but prophet as in someone who has the ability to see something that a lot of people don't necessarily see whether it's in pattern whether it's in colors whether it's in organization whether it's in numbers this is androgyny this is irrespective of your gender and irrespective of your sexual orientation it is a gift and queer people have a higher dose of it likewise a woman who exudes a lot more feminine energy but very little masculine energy that would also be a form of handicap but again just like the man who exudes a lot of masculine energy there's nothing necessarily wrong with this woman that is just her purpose as she has manifested this will be a woman who would possibly match with a man who has a lot of masculine energy and together they will have a more airtight calibration together so for example this could be a woman who enjoys being a stay-at-home mom you know she likes to cook she likes to plan she likes to clean she likes to take care of the kids at home that is just her comfort zone anything that has to do with you know maybe paying the bills mowing the lawn going to work that just gives her anxiety it's not really her thing and then you have the man who is the doer he's a worker he goes out there to make money and then he comes home and provides for the family but when it comes to anything that has to do with planning he gives it to the wife because he knows oh yeah you know what she's good with the numbers she's good with the paperwork she's good with this and this and that and both of them complete each other but when it comes to androgyny i'm talking about people who manifest both masculine and feminine energy and queer people have a huge advantage because it is so heavy that it manifests itself even in your physicality as queerness and going back to the topic of buffer like i mentioned before everyone has buffer every single one of us but of course depending on what category of buffer i don't know what categories there are depending on what categories of buffer some people have more black people have a lot more buffer compared to white people in the context of race in the context of gender women have a lot more buffer compared to men in the context of uh, sexual orientation queer people also have a lot of buffer compared to straight people again this is because the dot of everything is conscious it understands that queer people at a time in being especially right now and also in certain other cultures queer people have a, a hard time this is why the dot of everything has gifted queer people with the buffer to be able to overcome and persevere again this buffer is human every single one of us has it see the key here is dependent on what your purpose is in this world and how much possible resistance you will have in this world is going to determine 
how much buffer you have. So some people have significantly more buffer than others. Some people have very little buffer. There's possibly a white man who has significantly more buffer than a black man. This is because this white man has a manifestation and purpose that is going to be very rough relative compared to this black man who possibly was born into a wealthy family. Everything is handed to him. Meanwhile, this white man is born in the ghetto in the hood, going through all kinds of stuff, right? That's what the buffer does to help you overcome this reality. On a physical, it looks different. It manifests itself in so many different ways, but on the spiritual level, it's actually equal. And this takes me to the topic of Jesus. I believe that Jesus is probably the only person or one of the only people in this world that was blessed by the God of everything with the most buffer ever. Jesus' buffer was probably so high that it could possibly kill or heal. And I have my own opinions about Jesus as not agreed with a lot of Christians, especially Jesus' childhood. I believe that there's a lot that happened in Jesus' childhood that possibly triggered his becoming or his journey to becoming uh, when he didn't understand his buffer. But I believe that this buffer manifested through Jesus in so many powerful ways that he didn't even understand as a child because that God of everything had gifted him with something in preparation for what's to come, the very difficult life that was awaiting him. And he didn't always understand that. And I feel like something, something very, very significant happened in his childhood to trigger him learning about what is. Then he understood what his purpose was and why it was extremely, extremely important for him to lean into his purpose 100%. But that's a whole nother conversation for a whole nother day. I don't want to piss off anyone today. And this is why I am extremely, truly, deeply, deeply within my soul truly glad and grateful that I am black African and queer not necessarily because these three things are special and if you're not black African and queer you're not special but my point is you are perfect the way you are this is divinely meticulously calibrated you are the best version of yourself that can be all things considered of course given in consideration to your parents decision your mother's decision to live with your father you know all of the things that have led to you this is the best possible manifestation all things considered and all things i mean all things beyond human reality there is no mistake here lean into your own being and you'll be able to overcome this world the ego knows that and it seeks to divide and conquer if you are a black person white supremacy lies to you and tells you that the closer you are to the proximity of whiteness the better you are and you ought to look up to whiteness that is a lie from the ego and i believe that black people from africa receive this pressure and this lie the most this is especially because considering the fact that i've lived and traveled within africa and i can see the difference in the hierarchy of blackness compared to other black people in other parts of the world there's a lot of pressure coming from the lies of the ego that white supremacy is the order of the day and it's something that you need to look up to and emulate that is a lie and then going back to queerness you are perfect as a queer person i think it makes my soul cry so much when i see so many people who are in the closet you are made of diamond like you have no idea you are gold you are diamond. you are a precious stone but in a world that is so dead in spirit someone is convincing you that you are the weirdo you are the problem so much so that you hide your own glycerin and shininess you hide your own power the power of a, a gem the power of a diamond the power of of gold this world is so dead in spirit that you have been convinced to reduce yourself from diamond to dust so much so that you're ashamed of who you are you are power you are the gatekeeper to the infinite you are the gatekeeper to nirvana you are the gatekeeper to heaven you are a blessing to this realm without you this realm will be dead you are what these people need you are a gift to humanity you have been blessed with a higher calibration of androgyny tap into it and bless this realm with infinity it lives within you this is what i try to explain to people through my practice as a life coach i wish i can bottle up what i feel and sell to people so you can understand and this is why i am genuinely glad that i'm a black african queer person 
anywhere else, I would have missed it. I know very well I would have missed it. I could see myself being very susceptible to the ego and, you know, thinking that, yes, there's something inherently wrong with black people. There's something inherently wrong with queer people. And especially there's something inherently wrong with black African people. But I am glad that the universe has blessed me with this gift that the world has told me is a curse. But I chose to start on learning a lot of things when I start to notice that there's a lot of confliction and walk away from all of that indoctrination to find my own truth for me to discover like, oh my God, I have been lied to. Not only have I been lied to, I am perfect the way I am. I am good because I come from goodness. It will be impossible for you to not be good because you come from goodness. The epitome of goodness is your creator. Why would anything less than good come from the epitome of goodness who is also your creator? Be you. Anyway, this is the end of today's episode. Let me know if you understand, agree, co-sign, concur with everything that I've said, or if you don't agree, if you disagree, please leave your comments down below. I always look forward to reading some of these comments and responding to some of them. Thank you so much. Please don't forget to subscribe, share with your friends and family. Do not forget to hit that bell notification so anytime I upload a video, you'll be the very first to be notified. And lastly, feel free to follow me on social media, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok at LTAU with Uche. My email address is let's talk with Uche at gmail.com. Thank you so much. Until next episode, peace out.